going on guys? In this video I'm going to show you how I went from a bone stock Mustang to this. So here it is, a 2006 Mustang GT. So this was in a front end collision. Frame rail here was bent up pretty bad. So the last two weeks it was at the frame repair shop getting the frame uh, straightened out. So this rail was bent up like I said and they pulled that down. 4.6 liter V8. I think it's something like uh, 300 crank horsepower stock. I bought a turbo kit. Uh, and this is all the piping, all the cold side and hot side here. Uh, everything's stainless in this kit. A few things you got to relocate. You got to relocate the power steering pump, relocate the oil filter, and relocate the uh, sway bar. And that's what all these brackets are for. We got oil feed and return for the turbo. New fuel pump we're putting in. Uh, wastegate blow off valve, obviously. Air filter, 70 millimeter turbo. Uh, new MAF, injectors, uh, we got AEM True Boost, so boost gauge and controller all in one, and we got AEM Y band. Using the uh, SCT BDX tuner, uh, but I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go down to get it dyno tuned professionally, I'm not tuning myself at all. Uh, intercooler, some other stuff there. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean by where the turbo should be? Well, I mean, should have came with the turbo. See, there's from no factory. turbo here. <laughs> they forgot to put the turbo in on these, so we're gonna fix that. And they put a thermostat instead. I guess the guy that was doing it that day just messed up the part numbers or something. So now we're changing the spark plugs because the spark plugs need to be a little colder. But because it's a Ford Mustang, all the plugs are gonna break off in the head because it's an aluminum head, and they didn't design it right. So carbon builds up around the plugs and then you go to take them out and they just break off. So we're going to do that. Step do one, buy a Mustang. Got it. <laughs> Step one. Really? Step two, cry. What if none of them break? I will be amazed. Do we get like Guinness Book of World Records? Yeah, probably. Well, the, uh, the first one's going to come out because I just put it in like two months ago. So here we go. Yeah, it did break. And it looks brand new, because it is. One down, seven to go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that shouldn't be, it shouldn't be right. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna break. Dude, it's gonna snap your wrench. <laughs> break a bar on there. Oh, <gasps> it's probably breaking. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's breaking. <laughs> Did it? Yeah, I think so. I don't even know how to get this out now. So we got this much of the spark plug out so far. <laughs> the rest is still in there. <laughs> you want to try another one? A different take, spark plug? Take a break? No. Take a break on this bad boy? No. <laughs> not about it. He is not about it. Yes, blowtorch and hammer. <laughs> yes. What are we doing? I have no idea. <laughs> Trying to get a spark plug out. So explain my great idea. Trying to stick this in there. Grab. Grab it right on there. And pull out because it's stuck. So we're on to uh, making a tool V3. <laughs> V3? <laughs> so, uh, what do we decide on? We're going to cut it and weld it at a 90 so it's small enough to fit in the uh, well for the spark plug. There's no way you're going to lay a sick feet on that. Step five, buy a TIG welder. <laughs> Step five of removing spark plugs from Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> this is so dumb. I didn't believe you. On a scale of one to why am I doing this? What do you think uh, the odds of one thousand percent? This is not working. <laughs> I gotta see. I just did one little piece. Let's see if it actually fits. 
Oh, that's that's kind of money what? actually. It's actually pretty sweet. Wow, custom. Custom. All right. Yeah. Some more welds. So now that you learned to weld, <laughs> which was step six, by the way. But now you can weld for, for all the other things that aren't going to work on your Mustang. So now that you made your tool, let's see if it fits on your spark plug. So you That's laser right in there. Perfect. And uh, hopefully it can pull it out. Made it till it worked. All right. Wow. Success. Success. How do you feel? I feel amazing. That was awesome. I didn't even freaking know where it exploded. Went. <laughs> it's somewhere. What happened was, first, this loosened itself up and broke itself from this part of the metal down here. But then it was just sitting on here like this, floating. So I had to pull that out. And this was stuck in here with the rest of the ceramic that was down this portion of ceramic that's actually still in the car. And then this was stuck in that ceramic so I couldn't pull it out so I made the tool to grab on there. Pull that out. Now the last step is to use this tool to first, we're actually use, yeah, this one. We're gonna push the ceramic that's still stuck down in the car, push that down enough so that then we can thread this into this metal on the inside of that metal, thread it into there, and then yank that whole piece out all together. So there. <laughs> that is one spark plug. That's the process one right there. Spark plug. We're trying to do one spark plug every two hours. <laughs> oh, and I don't know what that was. Oh. <laughs> There it is. Yo, what we're doing. Getting the custom custom tool with just a couple thousand dollars and 82 easy steps. <laughs> you too. Hey. Oh yeah. There it is. We broke three today and I broke one a couple months ago. So uh, four out of eight broke. So they're all out. And it only took us uh, 17 days. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when we started, it was cold. Now it's like summer. I don't know. Now we can put the new plugs in. Are these known for breaking going in? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> if they are, I'm throwing this car out. <laughs> we're, we're setting it on fire at night. We're going 15 foot pounds here. Always tighten in a star pattern. <laughs> <laughs> that matters. <laughs> Same as my Ford Taurus was. You had a Ford you Taurus? Kinda, you push in and yeah. That's probably the easiest it could be right there. So what step was that? I think that was step one. Okay. How heavy do you think that is? Two pounds? No, more than that. Oh, really? 10, 15. Oh, wow. Okay. Where's the fuel? Should be under this seal. So there that is. Take the connector off, hopefully. There we go. Oh, wow. That's step seven, everyone. Now, I need to loosen this ring. This is where you like twist it, right? Yep. Do you have the tool? Nope. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be impossible. Look at the guy in the video just said use a piece of brass rod. Was he a redneck by any chance? Well, yeah, it's a Mustang, so. Okay. There we go. Fire, fire. I think we're good. Shut up. <laughs> It was a test. There you go. There's the lock. I need to reach in and unhook something. <laughs> That's the step. <laughs> reach in, unhook <laughs> something. <laughs> There's a crossover. Oh, that is a ripe right smell. Always work in an enclosed environment. Oh, I got it. Oh, I see the gas in there. Wow, that really is cool. Yeah, it is. In the bucket. There's the line I had to take off. That crosses over to the other side of the fuel tank. Oh, there we go. Got Holy it. moly. That was not easy. Definitely the right tool for the job here. Yep. 
How to take screws out 101. That's a tight fit. So I need to, I cut off the connector that went to the old fuel pump because the new fuel pump has a new connector and just leads. So I'm gonna solder these guys together. Just solder black to black. I'm assuming that's gonna be right. Red to the other one. So it should be able to power up the fuel pump. Fit this. There we go. We're good. And, oh yeah, fits. It didn't quite shrink down enough on that, so. So we had to review the footage. <laughs> we had to look back at our footage here to figure out how this all went back together. Holy moly. I think I got it. All right, let's get back in there. That's a tight fit. Oh yeah. Especially with all those liters per hour. That's good. Yep. Cool. So I, I just have a question for you. Did you purposely buy a blue BMW with black wheels to match your Jeep? No, I was actually an accident completely. All right. All right. Let's move forward with the injectors. All right. <laughs> hey. Yeah, that's a lot of force. I'm gonna take that one off. So then we can flip the whole assembly like over over there. Change those ones first, put it in, and then change these ones. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Okay. There we go. Wow. Just, just as planned. <laughs> Crazy. Didn't have to connect disconnect that one. Dude, watch the paint. <laughs> oh. I hope it doesn't. Oh my gosh, it's pointing right at me. It's gonna be a jet stream of fuel. Baby. Exactly what I thought was gonna happen. Dang. <laughs> well, you know what that means. Good. The new fuel pump's working. Yeah, we got pressure. Yeah. Feels good for the paint. <laughs> Rub it in. <laughs> How to do it the wrong way. Oh. Whoa! Okay. This is when you call your friend. But look at the difference here. Two little jets or six little jets? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, we're taking out the old injectors and we're putting new ones in because turbo is life. So what do you what are the specs on these bad boys? 47 pound per hour, maybe? I think that's what it is. Pounds? Yeah, whatever that means. Well you said the They're new ones them. have six jets? And the old ones have two, right? Yep. So we can safely assume that it's roughly three times more. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I think that's how that works. Yeah, right? that's how that works. <laughs> Where's the solid bar? This is the money shot. Plug in the injector. So it's recommended oh, to keep floppy. the oil in the pan when you do this? Oh yeah. Because then you know when you get through. <laughs> Come down with a bigger one. Oh, I hear it. Oh, look at that blurry shot. Good job, Alex. Hey, that's the shot we want. Yep, yep. What is that? Yep. What are you looking at, a cloud? There we go. <laughs> a cloud. <laughs> The scary thing is I don't really know where the oil pickup is, but it's definitely down here. <laughs> I don't I don't know where it is, but it's definitely down <laughs> here. Yeah, so the we don't tap it. Nine sixteenths, I need to get to nine sixteenths. So now we're up to about three thirty-two. Now you use your cobalt antenna from your cobalt SF.
sneaking, they punch one on one. Step one, buy a cobalt. Step two, get a shorty antenna because it's cooler. Ooh. Step three, sell cobalt because it's front wheel drive. I don't know if this is going to work, but it'd be cool if it did. We'll wouldn't see why not. Well, it's aluminum, so it's pretty soft. Keep going. There you go. You actually want that little flange that's creating on there so <laughs> that it can, you have something to tap. So you're not just tapping the thin sheet metal. That's why if you drill it, it wouldn't work as well. Oh, wow. That is in there. Cobalt antenna coming through. Yeah. That's a big boy. That is... <laughs> That's a small leak. <laughs> I'm just pretty happy about how this custom tool number two of the project worked out. I know. In case you missed the last video. <laughs> In case you missed it. The 17 hour spark plug change. Look at that. I'm trying to catch all the shavings with this. I kind of want to just take it out completely. Even though I think I want to tap a little bit more. Because I want to get all the burrs out. Right. You can see the pieces of steel on there. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's one. You can clearly see two, three threads. Wrap it the right direction so when you screw it in, it tightens and doesn't loosen and come off. I'm gonna also do our high temp RTV. Dang. You just made that. I know, right? That's awesome. Oil feed for the turbo. Yes. That's what this is. So, oil feed is going where the current oil sensor is, which is right here. So I need to unplug the connector. And now I gotta unbolt that, and hopefully I don't break it. <laughs> it's mad loose. What the heck? I'm getting all worried. I was worried. a little bit towards the turbo. The sensor going in. Maybe. I don't actually know exactly where I'm going to run it yet, but I'm just going to throw it up here for now. Alright, it's on the turbo now. I'm concerned now. Why? I saw this before now. I'm looking closer at it. What? Look at the ring. Oh my gosh, what? What's yeah. that? What kit is this again? A crappy one. You could probably show this picture on video. That's the O-ring. It's supposed to be down in this groove the whole way down here. Whenever someone installed it, it popped up and then they tightened it down, so now they probably ruined the O-ring. Mm-hmm. Totally not sealed at all. That'd be a boost leak right there. All right. Well, we're taking this apart. FYI, do not get this kit if you don't know how to do things. A lot of different things. And now that we took this off, you can see the problem. <laughs> so you can see right here, this was pinched, and this is exactly how it was put together, right like that. Huge boost leak right there. Oh wow, that's actually damaged. Yeah, like I thought, yeah. So, 
I think, I mean, I'm going to try to reuse it and also use RTV in addition to this. And then I think we'll be okay. I mean, I've literally never even taken the turbo apart, but I could tell that was not right. And I don't know exactly the right way to do this, but I would say it's probably by putting that on there like that and then putting this on carefully, you should be good to go. You literally had to be rushing. What does careful mean? Because they don't know. So. Slowly and not in China. <laughs> so I'm going to leave this pretty much on the inside. And then I'm going to just put this around the outside and hoping for the best here. Look at that bead though. Here we go, here we go. This is where they messed up, come on. This is where they messed up. Oh. Got him. Easy. Got him good. So that should be down. This should be up. Drain. Should be good. Some extra turbo prep stuff. This is like step like 1A. Yeah. And you only go to step 1A if you bought a crappy Chinese turbo. <laughs> First, center punch. A oh. little bit more when it loud. Look at the tape method. <laughs> Dang, dude. Oh man, it's like I know what I'm doing. On point. Are you an engineer? You can order this tape at jshoe.com forward slash warehouse. Tape method. Man, that's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, not many chips are in there. At I all. think the, my paper towel method is a lot better than yours. Oh, okay. Well, there's none. Okay. All right. <laughs> Gotta be a professional job. Some Gosh. professionals here. Look at that. Yeah, I got the shot, dude. Look at that. Like different threads. Oh, that would suck. Maybe. All right, follow um, his second channel, Joey Vlogs, <laughs> and um, tomorrow we're going to Walmart. <laughs> That's tight. That's tight there right there. All right. And you said this didn't need pipe tape. This did not need pipe tape because there was an O-ring on there. Yes. That was not screwed together yet, so they could not screw it up. Hey. hey. <laughs> All right. This is the feed. Let me think about. You know, well, it could come either way. It's, like, if it's coming this way, that's like a lot of line to put somewhere. <laughs> I was thinking it could go up kind of like this and just route it and then have it like that. Is that dumb? Uh, you can't have it that's going dumb. up at all, though. Remember. It's going up. It's gravity. So. This is the feed. Oh, yeah. What are you talking about? You know what? It's hot in here. I'm sweating. I'm a little lightheaded. It has to go up. <laughs> it's, it's coming from down there. Yeah, you, you know what? I don't I'm know sorry. Right. That'll look way more clean. I'll be chilling like that. Yeah. All right. So that means face it that way. All right, so turbo is ready to go.
Oh my gosh. We got three out of four out. <laughs> All right. Don't work on your own car, kids. Yeah. Bad idea. The two mm -hmm. lowers broke. The two uppers did not break. One was super easy, one was impossible. <laughs> this one's loose. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, what? <laughs> oh, it's right there. Cool, sign it up. I have no idea where it goes. <laughs> <laughs> How the heck? Where's pipe? It goes, it goes over this and under this. So I think it, goes, I think it literally goes through here. What? Yeah. Maybe? <laughs> what kit did you buy? <laughs> I don't know. It's so gonna work. And the other one hooks up to that bad boy. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> that is the most ridiculous design. Now what, friends of YouTube? Yep. Now what? <laughs> so how far along do you think we are? Uh, and that's within the whole the whole process. At least three <laughs> percent. <laughs> what? I don't know. We did the spark plugs. That only took seventeen days, and then the uh, the fuel pump took seventeen hours. Mm -hmm. Uh, what else? Now we're gonna try to drill. <laughs> I drilled up the studs that broke and it was horrible because the studs are hardened steel and uh, so you have to use hardened drill bits. I used cobalt drill bits. I broke like seven. Uh, yeah, it took like eight hours probably. The better way would have been use a torch to burn it out, but I don't have a torch. So next time. There she is. There she is. Next one. Oh, it just looks right. I'm hoping. Ah, oh, not even, this pipe doesn't even fit. <laughs> first yeah, one. The first one. First pipe. Crap. This is when. You wish you had a friend that didn't yeah. have a camera in your hand. That looks so stupid. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is gonna look really dumb. Yeah, but you're never gonna see any of this. It's yeah, you will, cause it's like a monster truck. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> What is happening? <laughs> what is happening? As of now, this is nowhere close to fitting. <laughs> it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. They were right. <laughs> All the internet was right. Well, let's rip everything out and just keep it stuck. There we go. There it is. Oh. This is all very tight, but. Good thing we had a lift. Oh my gosh, that would have been... <laughs> this would not happen. No. None of this would have happened. We might need to take a coffee break. This is how you extend things. Bam, extension. Bam, bam, bam. Extension. If I had a wide angle, I would have saw that. Oh that my gosh! <laughs> what?
You ready for coffee? Wait, do you have sugar here? Do you not? I actually don't. What? <laughs> what? Ah. Uh. So I can't have coffee. Freaking jelly and out of sugar. I'm not out of sugar, I just never bought any. <laughs> oh, oh, you're doing that and not tightening anything else. I just, yeah, I wanna make sure these are at the right spot. So that is the one collector, pipe. I guess. That, what would that be called? Collector? Merge pipe. That looks pretty good. Sweet. It looks like a pretzel from here. And if you had a friend, he would hold this pipe for you. Oh, you got it? All right, no. Yeah, you don't need to. Okay. That's how it freaking goes. <laughs> no, it's not hitting it. So anything. much clearance. <laughs> So this one's gonna be interesting because that does not look like that's gonna be. Wow, all right. What the heck? Oh. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> Got, it. Right. Cool. Got it. Got <laughs> it. Just some RTD. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that's fitting up. There's actually no There's way. actually no way any of this is fitting. <laughs> it's like, it's like hitting the pulley, dude. That's insane. There, it's not that, it's not that. Oh, oh, there. What did you do? <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Just laugh it off. Yeah. Yeah, cry tonight. Tonight. No, but like, look how close this is. Look oh how, yeah, I saw. it's touching the pulley right now. But look at that. Like this hitting here, hitting here. There's no way. That dent is like so not at the right spot. Hey, I'm gonna listen to the YouTube guy that is like, bro, nothing's gonna look like it's gonna work, and you gotta bolt the turbo. Cause that's the big thing. This bolts straight to the turbo. You bolt the turbo onto something fixed up there. Then you see exactly where this ends up. And I think this thing's gonna be need need to be dented differently, and this one's definitely gonna need dented. How did they not already dent? It? Wait, they said it was, but it's not. I don't understand. Maybe they forgot to dent this one, because I bet like this all needs to be dented so it can be shifted up more. Like this pipe is hitting so many different things. Let's see what happens. Oh, God. really? <laughs> you do not know. Really? You do not know. <laughs> So this is going to be the turbo support bracket, and it attaches to a stud that's already on the engine. Pretty sure it goes that way. It seems like it doesn't fit that great. Did you expect anything less? Oh, oh, oh. It's heavy. That's a freaking turbo. Yeah, I think I real I saw that. I knew that was might be an issue. But it looks like it'll be just be really close. I might have to trim that out a little. So like one guy online's like, yep, so I decided to uh scrap all the fans and get electric fans and Oh uh, yeah. I'm like, alright dude. <laughs> Could just trim it a little. <laughs> just being dramatic. Yeah. Ended up having to trim out some of the radiator shroud here, fan shroud, because the housings were hitting like right there and right here. So I'm thinking now it'll be fine. We're gonna test fit for hopefully like a final time. <laughs> oh, you can really see those dents in that light. Oh man. I didn't get the shot of me helping. Whose hand is that? <laughs> what? Does he have a friend? <laughs> it's kind of hard now though, because the turbo is so heavy, it's hard to push it up. You did this one, right? Yeah, I dented it up here, here, 
here, here, <laughs> yeah. like four spots. Because I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be dented and they didn't do it for some reason. They didn't dent that one at all. Here, this is all like, oh, well, look at that clearance. There's clearance. There actually is pretty much clearance. Yeah, I think that's, that's right. That's not bad. I think that's right where it needs to be. This is, this would work actually. This makes me want to work on a four cylinder now. <laughs> way more room in the engine bay. Yeah. This can go in from this side. Oh. <laughs> uh. So we got the downpipe up through the engine bay. Uh, we had to loosen up the sway bar. Completely. Now what are you doing? I'm trying to V-band it on here, see how where it sits. Yep. It's good, it's just sitting up against a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> There's a turbo in your Mustang. So the only issue might be right here. Because look how close that is. Yeah, that's... For the clamp, the clamp might be right on that. So we're going with the uh, next pipe. Might as well. Yep. Did they dent it enough? That's no. the question. No. Oh, perfect. It fits up perfectly. What are you talking about, dude? How the heck is it? Oh my gosh, it's gonna have to go through? <laughs> Dude, what? This is insanely tight. It's like a roller coaster of piping. Like, this is insane. Like, you should have just done like remote mount turbo. What the heck? They should have just put the turbo right here. Put the turbo in the trunk. That would have been easier. This is actually terrible. <laughs> this is the worst kit I've ever seen in my life. But I mean, honestly, with what you have to go through, they did the best they could, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> really? I mean, they did That's not verify weird. it would fit in any form. They did not verify anything would fit, but. We put some pipes in a box. Uh, it may fit, it may not. <laughs> uh, a bunch of flex pipes. <laughs> yeah. Have fun. RTB, go. RTB and flex RTB. pipes, have fun. Yeah, heat wrap both of those. Heat wrap both. Step one, put gloves on. <laughs> Step one of two. Careful not to dent the metal though. Uh, oh yeah, it's not <laughs> dented at all yet. This might be a pain to work with, this big roll. It's hard to do on really curvy things. There it is. Not bad for your first one. Yeah, here we go. It didn't turn at all. I should have just been right for it. It was dead straight. What are you doing? Lay up. Lay up. Hey. Oh. Home stretch, eh? Not pretty much. Did you see my oil filter relocation bracket? Super custom. The way they show you to mount it is like way over here. And then you have to run all the lines against all these hot pipes. So I made this little bracket here and then put it down and I test fit with the bumper and everything should be good. Intercooler pipes are right here. So the oil should drip past them, not on them. Screw it on, it should be pretty easy. It's a lot shorter to where it needs to go. Definitely hits everything. So what do you think? All bolted up? What do you think of the fitment? Something. Yeah? <laughs> Nothing is fitting. This kid is great. They don't know how to bend brackets. So they, what's, uh, let's see here. They bend it at an angle for some reason. I don't know why. Because this sits down so flat. This... And they built bend it at an angle, which it doesn't need to be. So now it's going to need to go like this. It doesn't fit. Like every time we think, we're like, you know what? It's not that bad. 
<laughs> you know, you know, we got through it. It's not that bad. Something else happens. <laughs> like this. How can you not get a bracket right? I like why these came unpainted so that you could just modify them first and then paint them. Kind of. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to just let it on this bracket. Are you kidding me? Well, there are the most ways in the wind. <laughs> it's pretty good. There's Go no like way they recommend running one bracket like this. It should be good. I might weld these together. So this was the provided uh, intercooler bracket. <laughs> it didn't fit at all and it just screwed together with a nut and bolt here. So I kind of adjusted the angle. I had to cut out a piece here for fitment and then I welded it together. And they only provided one side, that was the left side. So for the right side I made this guy just stainless rod and, and just mild steel plate. This mounts to the horn mount and then the intercooler. So now it's pretty solid. I drew a little diagram to try to figure out uh, all the vacuum lines because come to find out there's a lot of different diameters that you could be using for uh, like blow off valve and boost gauge and waste gate. So I drew this little diagram to figure it out. I'm basically running off one of the fuel rail vacuum lines which uh, goes down to the blow off valve and then it also has a little tee off to go to the, the boost controller gauge. And that's just so that the, the boost gauge can sense the manifold pressure because that's coming right off the manifold. And then for the actual wastegate line, we drilled and tapped the turbo. And so that's coming off and then teeing um, exactly how the AEM true boost instructions show you for an external wastegate basically. So you tee off, go into the side port of the wastegate and then you go to their boost solenoid which is actually right here, and then goes to the top um, port on the wastegate. So I just drew all this out so I could figure out all the diameters. Oh, look at that. That's the biggest grommet of them all. The grommet guy. They should have the grommet guy on the spark plug, you know. <laughs> the grommet guy? You think there's a guy? There's a grommet guy. Yeah. He was the firewall grommet guy. Yeah. Should have had him on designing the heads and spark plugs. We found a sweet grommet to use. Bam, right there, and it goes right into the footwell next to the pedals. And it already has a little thing for like adding adding some more cables there, so that's what we're gonna do. This is the line for the boost controller. Blow off valve line. We got coming off the compressor housing, a line that goes right here, and then T's. One line goes to the controller solenoid, boost controller solenoid. The other line will go down to the wastegate. I've decided I don't really like any of the gauge pods that were out there for the Mustang. And I also wanted a way to hold the, uh, the, the tuner itself so that I could display some of the OBD2 uh, parameters. So my first step was I modeled the radio itself and that's because I wanted to replace the radio completely with this new gauge pod. So I only modeled it roughly and just kind of cared about the front panel area and the, the tab locations because that's how my new pod is going to mount.
So once I had that modeled, uh, I could use that to base my uh, new pod off of. So working from that basic front panel shape from the radio and the mounting tabs, I was able to get to this final shape for my actual gauge pod. And as you can see, I can only use three of the four mounting tabs because the tuner itself has a very large connector that has to be connected right there and comes right where the, uh, the fourth tab would be. I modeled the tuner first so that I knew what uh, kind of shape I needed to hold that in. And then from there, I just tried to figure out the best way to hold the gauges. And I could tell that there isn't quite enough room in this outline to fit the tuner and the gauges. But underneath here is just an HVAC uh, bezel. So I think I'm just going to trim out a little bit here and here on the bezel. And then I'll just throw the gauges in there. So the basic idea here is that the, the tuner will slip in here under this little tab. And I'm planning to just put some Velcro on the back of the tuner and secure it down here. I have this little cutout so that you can reach in and grab it because I know I'll probably want to be taking that in and out uh, every so often. So I wanted to make it easy. My plan is to get this SLS 3D printed out of a nylon material. That's going to be the most cost effective option. Uh, and it's, it's actually a very strong material and should hold up well. I'm also going to get it uh, dyed black. And if that doesn't quite match right, I can always paint it. Here's the gauge pod. But my problem was there's not enough uh, area here, real estate, to have the tuner and gauges below it. But I'll be able to just cut a little bit out of this HVAC surround so that I can fit gauges there. Here's the final fitment with the gauges installed. Everything seems to fit great. So the kit that I bought comes with everything up to this point. And so this is supposed to bolt to the stock exhaust right here. See it splits into the dual exhaust, but we don't want that crap. So we're going to cut it off right here and then we're going four inch, single, single, single four inch. And then we're going five inch, bro. <laughs> flex pipe right here because there's no flex pipe at this point after the turbo. So I want to put a flex pipe in so that things don't shift around a lot and put pressure on the turbo or move the tip around. I want it to stay where it's at. So that's the plan. Let's do it. The parts you'll need for this install. <laughs> Flex pipe. Three, so this is a three inch to five inch adapter, which I'm planning to cut in the middle so that we can use the three to four inch section for here. And then we'll use the four to five inch section for the tip. So we've got a straight piece. We've got a U-bend. Actually, I have two U-bends. And we got the five inch section. And this is all 304 stainless. Out of a three inch to five inch adapter, we made a three to four and then a four to five out of one piece. Perfect. I'm welding a three to four inch adapter to the flex pipe. I've just tack welded it on.
This is where a friend would be helpful. Yeah. Haven't been able to buy one yet. They haven't been on sale. This is gonna be so tight. Oh, wow. Sorry. Oh my. So like, I think right now I'm gonna just cut like all that away and then whatever's behind it in the way. Yeah. That's like right where I want it. So if you're doing this yourself, uh, mark it about eight inches back. <laughs> yeah, when you're making your custom four inch to five inch for your turbo Mustang. <laughs> this would apply to probably zero people in the world. to go to the five inch, four to five inch. I trimmed it back a little more so that the, it'll actually slip over the four inch perfect. So that'll give us some adjustment when we're putting the final tip five inch piece on. So I can kind of wiggle it around a little. Give us a quick rep. A what? Oh, a rep. Oh, yeah. Wait. Oh, oh. That looks so ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Here we go, finished product. I did not build that. From here back is what we built. Flex pipe, because there's no flex pipe in the entire system after the turbo. Uh, three to four inch adapter that we cut down the three to five inch to make the three to four inch. Straight piece of four inch. Uh, little bend here, another little bend there just to pull it tight against the diff and sway bar. Uh, then we got the four to five inch which was made from that same adapter piece. And then we got two feet of five inch. And we got two, I added two uh, hangers because that's the only hangers from about the middle of the car back. So support the whole system because it's kind of heavy now. That is actually ridiculous looking. What did you do? <laughs> what the heck? Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> oh, I love that I brought it up because 
freaking it's crazy. Oh, it's so nice. It, what the heck? Man, it looks it looks so good that Dude, it's look, all up a little. Go bit. like spot. Look at that. Oh, it's uh, so sick. It actually doesn't look too bad. Huh? I love it. That is JDM. I actually like from right here. It doesn't look too bad. Well, of course it looks amazing. <laughs> what the? Now what's the way from the side? <laughs> you should have went bigger. I just wanted to start. Okay. All right. Let's go. <laughs> what do you want to want it to do? Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, I am so nervous. It's pretty fast. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. It's scary. You know, you can tell the chassis is not meant. <laughs> the for suspension is it? 500 wheel horsepower. <laughs> it does power. like a wheelie. Almost. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with the outcome. Yeah. More power than I thought I was gonna make. So.